you'll see the desk there in front of you. Can I also ask um, members and members of the public uh, to m either mute their phones uh, or switch them off completely? Thank you. Uh, item one on the agenda this afternoon, um, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies for absence, Dan? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, we've had apologies from uh, Councillor Harper and Councillor Simons' as attendance as substitute, and we've had apologies from Councillor Andrew Bond and Councillor Sandra Bond as in attendance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, item two on the agenda this afternoon, declarations of interest. Uh, does any member of the committee wish to declare any disclosable pecuniary interest or non-statutory disclos disclosable interest? Um, if so, can you raise your virtual hand now, Councillor Simons? Uh, gone off. So, sorry, Councillor Simons, could you repeat that? You oh, didn't sorry, have your went, microphone on. Yeah, it went off, sorry. Um, yes, Chair, yeah, I'm Thorny Parish Councillor and obviously Ward Councillor for Thorny, so uh, I've got no pecuniary interest or I'm not or predetermined. Not predetermined. Um, thank you, Councillor Simons. Um, I have to say that was... Uh, well received but probably unnecessary if, if members have um, any declarations that they wish to make now that are already on the council website you probably don't have to I'll take advice on that but uh, you probably don't have to announce them at this stage uh, Councillor Rickbell Can you hear me? Yes Thank you <laughs> Um, again, uh, item 5.3, I know the family, uh, but no predetermined, anything like that. Just wanted to put that to your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Iqbal. Um, do any other members have any declarations of interest that aren't already on the uh, Council's website? Nope. Okay. Item 3 on the agenda, declaration to make representation as a ward councillor. Um, does any member wish to make any representations as a ward councillor on any of the items listed today? Um, if so, can they raise their virtual hand now? I'll take that as a no. Thank you. Um, minutes of previous meetings, item 4. Um, committee, we are being asked to approve the minutes of the three previous planning committee meetings. Um, Dan? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I just uh, want to go through each of the sets of minutes and get approval. Of the yep. in a second thank you, Dan. Um, firstly, the meeting held on the 23rd of March uh, this year. Can I ask for a proposer and seconder? Um, who, can I have a proposer for those minutes? Somebody that was present? Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Proposed and second. Councillor Hogg and Councillor Warren. Uh, secondly, the meeting on the 13th of April uh, this year. Can I have a proposer and a seconder or any, any dissenter? Councillor Hogg again. Councillor Brown. Councillor Hogg proposed, Councillor Brown second. Thirdly, the meeting held on the 20th of April this year. Um, again, uh, at risk of repeating myself, can I have a proposer and a seconder? Councillor Warren proposes. Councillor Hogg. Thank you. Got that down? Yeah. Okay. Item five, we now move on to the substantive items of the agenda this afternoon. Item five is the land at Bishop's Road Eastgate in Peterborough. I can ask Louise Simmons to introduce the item. Louise. Thank you and through you, Chair. The proposal before you today is in hybrid form and comprises two separate elements. Firstly, Full planning permission is sought for a three-storey building for research and development use associated with the University of Peterborough, and this is referred to hereafter as Phase 2. And secondly, outline planning permission is sought for a car park of up to 380 spaces. The detailed matters of access and scale are sought as part of this application, with all other matters, those being appearance, landscaping and layout, are reserved for later consideration. Next slide, please, Dan. As members will see and are familiar with, the application site is situated on land to the south of Bishop's Road and to the north of the embankment. It comprises three distinct areas, the former Warina Car Park, the Regional Pool Car Park and Bishop's Park. 
The site is located within the identified Peterborough City Centre boundary and in particular the Riverside North policy area which is set out in the local plan. As you will see, beyond the site to the north is Bishop Crichton Academy Primary School and residential properties within Stevenson Court, South Road and along Bishop's Road and I've annotated these for you. Beyond that to the northwest is the Grade 1 listed cathedral and its precincts. To the east is the regional pool building itself, to the south the athletics track with the embankment beyond, and to the west is Bishop's Road car park with the Grade 2 listed Lido. Turning to look at the site, I'm obviously conscious that members haven't been able to have an accompanied site visit, so I've tried to uh, include as many photographs for you as I can. This photograph shows the context of the application site looking east along Bishop's Road. As you will see, the site is well screened by a mature shelter belt. A small part of this has already been permitted for removal as part of the Phase 1 planning permission to improve visibility of the campus when walking from the city centre. The crane shows the location of Phase 1, with Phase 2 to be located further south, which is to the right of the picture. Moving further to the east, this shows the relationship of the two phases and now the proposed car park. Thanks, Dan. Here is an alternative view of the Phase 1 and Phase 2 site and so it shows the relationship looking back towards the city centre. And here, further along to the east, is the Phase 1 development and construction, along with the access serving the site, which will be widened as part of the Phase 1 planning permission. This will also serve the Phase 2 building itself. Moving further along to the east, this is the existing access to the regional pool car park, which will be closed as part of the proposal. And this is a wider shot looking back to the city centre, showing the relationship of the application site. Moving further along Bishop's Road, this photograph shows the existing access to the regional pool and athletics track alongside the application site. You will see just to the right of shot are the gardens and the bungalows which are located within Stevenson Court. And this photograph better shows the relationship of the existing neighbouring dwellings, which includes Stevenson's Court, South Street and Bishop's Road, with the car park proposed just to the right of this photograph. So looking in more detail to the proposal, this is the proposed site layout for the full element of the application, the Phase 2 Research and Development Building. It also shows the siting of the Phase 1 building, which has already been granted planning permission. It will be sited on land immediately to the rear of this Phase 1 building within the confines of the former Marina car park. Some limited on-site car parking would be provided to the east, east side of the site alongside the access to, for service vehicles. This would result in some amendment to the parking layout approved as part of the Phase 1 development and some of those parking spaces need to be relocated elsewhere and I'll come on to that in later detail. The building would be three storeys tall and used for research and development associated with the university. An anchor tenant will take up approximately one third of the space and this tenant would be Photocentric, a Peterborough-based company specialising in 3D printing. The remaining space would be set out as flexible space for research and development use by tenants who are not yet secured. This slide shows the proposed ground floor layout of the Phase 2 building. Uh, the mustard coloured areas represent the workspace. The gross internal floor area of the building would be approximately 3,300 square metres and the footprint would extend to approximately 1,200 square metres. This is the first floor, again with a similar arrangement. And this is the second floor, with the pink area representing that to be occupied by Photocentric. Turning next to the design, the building height would match the height of the Phase 1 building, standing at approximately 13.3 metres to the parapet. There would be two taller sections, as you can see, which are for plant enclosures and lift stairwell overruns. These shown on the slide here are the northern and southern elevations, the northern fronting to Bishop's Road, the southern towards the embankment. As you will see, the form of the building is relatively simple, a regular shape and form with a flat roof design. It would comprise a predominantly glazed base area with the building's mass broken up by a mixture of cladding, glazing um, and that would help aid um, improvements to reduce the mass. The main entrance of the building would be to the western elevation 
which is shown here alongside the eastern elevation. This mirrors that of phase one. So as you approach from the city centre, that will be the main entrance to both phases one and two. Turning now to the outline element of the proposal, it is proposed for the 200 existing spaces in the regional port car park to be retained, with up to, up to, and that is the key here, 180 additional spaces to be provided on top of this. That would result in a car park of up to 100, uh, 380 spaces. The only way that this could be accommodated within the confines of the brownfield land and without encroaching upon public open space would be in the form of a decked car park. At this stage, the matter of access is sought in detail, which I should discuss later, but also scale is sought. This indicative site layout has been submitted, but it is not a committed layout, and that's important to note. It's purely been submitted to demonstrate that the number of parking spaces proposed can be fitted within the parameters that are sought. This parameter plan shows that the car park would be to a height which matches with the phase one building, which you can see on the right and officers are proposing a condition which ensures compliance with that at later stage. And this parameter plan shows the decked element of the car park would not be sighted any further forward towards Bishop's Road than the phase one building, and that is indicated by the orange line, which I appreciate is not particularly clear on this slide, but there is an orange line there showing the building line. Turning to the matter of access, it's proposed for the existing regional pool car park to be closed and instead all traffic associated with the proposed car park, regional pool building and athletics track would be using one access as shown here. This would be amended with the removal of the spur, oh sorry Dan, can you turn the next slide? This is the existing access, so the spur shown in the foreground would be removed and in the further background at the bend of the road would be where the new amended access would be located. And within, as you move into the site along the regional pool access road, there would be an access punched through as shown here. So turning now to the material planning considerations, the principle of development is accepted by officers. The vision and intentions of the policies for the Riverside North policy area seek the location of the university along the Bishop's Road frontage and the application site for both elements of the proposal is fully in line with this. In addition, officers are of the view that the proposal represents the effective reuse of previously developed land with a high quality landmark development. The proposal would continue the process of regenerating and enhancing this part of the city centre with an education development not of benefit just to the city but to the wider area, which the MPPF requires be given great weight in decision making. The overall design approach is considered to be of high quality in terms of the Phase 2 building and would mirror that of Phase 1. The development would complement one another and appear as landmark within the locality. With regards to the car park element, this, the detailed design would be for consideration at a later date and officers are mindful that the design quality would have to be exceptional. The application site lies within an area that is sensitive in terms of heritage assets and as you can see here there is close relationship to the grade one listed cathedral and its precincts to the northwest and the grade two listed Lido to the west. Following amendment to the application which has removed the car park from Bishop's Park as shown here onto the regional car park no objections have now been received from the key consultees, those being Historic England, the Gardens Trust or the City Council's own conservation officer. Given that both elements of the proposal would match the height of the Phase 1 building and would not be sighted any further forward to tw towards Bishop's Road, the proposal would not result in any harm to the setting or significance of heritage assets particularly so with the cathedral with important views preserved, in this case the view from Bishop's Park. And this is the wider view across the embankment from the south. The development would be visible just above the building line to the right of the cathedral. It would not alter the relationship that has already been permitted as a result of the phase one building. In terms of archaeology and buried heritage, the site of the phase two building has already been evaluated with nothing of significant note found and the council's archaeologist is content to secure investigation of the car park site by condition. So turning now to the highway implications, the application site was accompanied by a transport assessment which the local highway authority has accepted. In terms of parking, 
The proposed car park seeks up to 180 spaces in addition to the 200 that are currently present on the regional pool site. As such, for clarity, a 380 space car park is proposed. This would not solely be for the university, but would be a public car park owned and operated by the City Council. The Phase 2 development in itself triggers the need for 128 spaces above and beyond the existing capacity within the City Centre. There's not presently sufficient space within the City Centre to meet the demands that the development would generate. The applicant has included up to 180 spaces to allow for the potential for a deficiency that was accepted as part of Phase 1 in terms of parking to be re-provided. Officers in the LHA welcome this but this is not necessarily going to happen when the re detailed reserve matters comes forward. Nor can officers require it to, because the development has only has to make itself acceptable. So a condition is proposed which would secure no less than 128 spaces be provided within 12 months of the opening of the Phase 2 building, as this is what the mo modelling provided within the transport assessment shows. And that brings me to the first uh, update within your briefing update pack. Uh, there is a typo, unfortunately I apologise for that, within the main up committee report. Condition 6 of the full planning permission should read that the car park be provided no later than 12 months following occupation of the phase two building. In terms of traffic generation, modelling provided by the applicant shows that junctions close to the site, those being the A15 roundabout at Rivergate and the Bishop's Road roundabout, are currently operating at close to capacity and would indeed be over capacity come 2026. But the modelling shows that this increase in traffic from the proposal would make negli negligible additional impact and it's therefore accepted by officers. The modelling does show that the capacity of Junction 5 of the Fletton Parkway, which you will all know to be Boone Gate, would be exceeded as a result of the proposal, but at worst, that would only equate to three more cars in the queue on the northbound slip. The Council is currently undertaking studies of the embankment area to determine how to increase capacity at the Boone Gate Junction. However, no final decision has been reached, and as such, there is no scheme against which financial contributions could be sought as part of this application. Given that the MPPF states that the development should only be refused if the impact upon public highway network is deemed to be severe, officers are not of the view that this application could be refused on traffic generation impacts. Finally, with regard to access, the local highway authority has advised that this would be safe, providing adequate manoeuvring and visibility. Turning to surface water drainage, this would utilise sustainable drainage systems including a green roof on the Phase 2 building, swales, basins and permeable paving. And the lead local flood authority, the council's drainage engineer, has raised no objections to this. Oh, there was one ahead, sorry now. With regards to neighbour amenity, the Phase 2 building would be located behind the Phase 1 development and would therefore not have any direct impact upon the amenities of neighbours. External plant is proposed, however a noise limit would ensure no unacceptable disturbance to occupants would result. This follows what we did with Phase 1 and what secured on the planning permission the officers issued. The proposed car park would be sited 48 metres from the closest residential properties in Stevenson Court. This is considered sufficient to prevent undue noise and disturbance, overlooking or overbearing impact by officers. Significant objection has been received from local residents with regards to the additional traffic along with associated pollution. An air quality assessment has, been accompanied, has accompanied the application, but it has not been accepted by the Council's Pollution Control Officer. A revised assessment is therefore required to better take into account the cumulative impact of phases one and two. However, that officer has advised that it is unlikely that significant air quality issues would arise and measures, whether they be physical or administrative, could be secured to mitigate any impact. Uh, turning to the final few material considerations, limited impact on-site biodiversity would result and surveys undertaken have not identified any protected species would be harmed. Updated badger surveys are required in regard to the car park element of the proposal and officers recommend to secure this by condition. In terms of trees, only one tree is proposed for loss, which the council's tree officer has accepted and a detailed scheme of landscaping for both the full and outline elements are proposed and are proposed to be secured by condition by officers. 
In terms of the public representations, given that there were so many, I thought I would just go into that in a little bit more detail. The majority of this related to the original submission which sought the car park element on Bishop's Park. During the first round of consultation, 109 individual letters were received alongside a petition of 136 signatories. During the second and third round of consultation, which was relating to the revised siting of the car park, 13 further objections were received. These largely did not raise anything new beyond the first, first consultation and includes the eight objections which are set out within your briefing update report. The third and last round of consultation has largely concluded, however the press advert still has time left to run and will conclude on the 17th of June, which is in two days' time. Uh, finally, with regards to the updates, the only other update is the further consultee comments received. Um, the only one which raises anything new or different is that from the Civic Society, who have amended the second paragraph of their comments, which are set out in the main report. So to conclude, officer recommendation for this application is that permission be granted, subject to the conditions set out with the main and update reports, and subject to completion of the outstanding public consultation period with no new substantive objections that have not previously been considered above being received. Thank you. Um, thank you, Louise, for that very comprehensive address. Um, we have four people registered to speak on this item. Item: We have Manjeev Singh, Rob Riding, Murdoch Cameron, and James McGavin, all on behalf of the applicants and agents. If you could now come up to the desk and speak, please. Um, can I invite you to address the committee? You'll have five minutes between you in which to address the committee and the Democratic Services Officer will let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Um, and then when the five minutes have elapsed, of course, uh, when you're ready, if you can please switch on your mic and start speaking. Thank you. Will you introduce yourself personally? You, you may have to introduce oh. yourself again. Hello, hi, good afternoon. It's Manjeev Singh um, from the CPCA. So um, thank you, Chair, for allowing me the opportunity to speak as the applicant in support of the proposed development ARU Peterborough. ARU Peterborough is an initiative driven by the CPCA in collaboration with Peterborough City Council and Anglo Ruskin University. ARU Peterborough is a new £30 million university set to open its doors to students in 2022. It will provide a transformational and inclusive higher education for the city and the region as a whole improving skill levels, creating opportunities which will assist drive up aspirations in the area. The aim of the university is to work with employees, employers as co-creators in developing and delivering a curriculum led by student and employer demand. Chair, as you're aware, the first teaching building of the university was granted planning permission in November 2020, which is the first phase of the university campus to be created at Bishop's Road with construction of the building currently underway. Courses will be delivered through a mixture of campus lessons, in-work training, apprenticeships, distance learning, outreach programs, which will improve accessibility and increase participation in higher education. The application under consideration today is a next stage of the development of Anglo Ruston University Peterborough, which comprises of a manufacturing and a materials research and development centre. The development will create a low carbon hub for research and development in Peterborough, enhancing our geographical position as a global leader in knowledge and innovation. The research and development building will integrate with the first teaching building to provide a campus environment. The anchor tenant will be an organisation called Photocentric, who are a local organisation at the cutting edge of innovation in photopolymer, a material that hardens with light. The applicant has worked hard with the officers,
prior to and during the consideration of the application. They have listened to the views of the local community to achieve a high quality development on a Bramfield site in Peterborough, which will be a real asset to the city and continue to realise the vision of the university. We therefore fully endorse your officer's recommendation for approval and re respectfully request that planning permission is granted for the development. Finished? Finished. Thank you, Mr Singh. Um, I can ask now if members of the committee wish to ask any questions of Mr Singh. No. You seem to have got off fairly light, Mr Singh, don't you? <laughs> um, no questions? Good. In that case, uh, thank you, Mr Singh. Um, if you'd like to uh, go back to the public area. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Well done, Mr. Singh. Thank you very much. Uh, have any members uh, got any questions for um, Louise or indeed any of our other officers? Councillor Hogg. There we go. Does that mean? Yeah. Um, would would just, you, much as I hesitate to ask, but could you remove your mask? Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so I just wanted some clarification on on, on the car park uh, situation. That um, it, we we had a briefing, or the, the council had a briefing um, some time ago about this development, um, and um, it was going to be a multi-story a multi-decked, multi-storey car park. Um, and then it was announced that that had been changed uh, to, 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 to a single deck. Um, and now in your kind of briefing, you were, you, you were kind of talking about a multi-deck again. Um, and, and I noticed in here that, for instance, the, the, the Civic Society, um, the, uh, they're, they're basically saying that the deletion of the... Um, decked multi-storey car park is, uh, is welcomed so can you just be you know uh, be a bit more explicit about whether or not that this is going to be a multi-storey car park or whether or not you know what are we actually agreeing to here are we saying that it's not going to be a multi-storey car park but we're agreeing in principle that it could be at a later stage or yeah so i'll leave it to you and see see if that kind of elicits the answer i'm looking for Thank you, Councillor Hogan, through you, Chair. Uh, the original application sought for a decked car park on the Bishop's Road, Bishop's Park site, which was public open space. Following um, significant public opposition, the applicant revised that. I am aware, but I don't know the exact content of the press statement by Councillor Holditch, but there is a lot of um, feeling that a lot of the members of the public are of the view that an announcement was made that the car park would revert to a surface, so, you know, a single area car park. To be clear, the current application seeks 180, up to 180, I should say, additional car parking spaces on top of the 200 that currently exist within the regional wall car park. The only way that that could be achieved within the confines of the brownfield land and without encroaching upon any public open space is for it to be decked. So therefore this application is seeking the parameters of a decked car park up to the height proposed of the phase one, so a parapet of 13.3 metres. It might not come forward as the full additional 180 spaces but as a minimum 123 additional spaces are needed to meet the demands of the phase two building. There was a little confusion because unfortunately the description of development as part of the second consultation didn't include that keyword additional so people thought that it was only 180 spaces and for that the service apologizes so to be clear it is a car park for up to 380 spaces which would have to be in a decked form. 
Okay, but, but it's essentially the, 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 the site of the original um, offering could, was. Could you just remove your mask, please? Sorry. You're, you're that muffled. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the original uh, plan was to put this on Bishop's Park, but it's now that the car park is going to be. Um, constructed on the existing car park so therefore there's no green uh, open space land that has has been uh, that needs to be built on now so this is a purely brown uh, field development now is that right that's correct dan if you could just go back to the um the combined layout for me if that's all right That's the one that will do. Uh, actually, no, if you could skip forward, actually, for the parameters plan, the next parameters plan. So um, it will entirely be contained on the regional pool car park and the parameters plans that have been submitted. So the, the previous slide and this slide show where the building would be sited. Uh, the layout is obviously not sought at this stage, but the parameters will be secured so that when a reserve matters application came forward, if members were to grant planning permission, it would have to accord with these parameters. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Louise, and th thank you, Councillor Hogg, for those, for those questions, um, important questions. Um, anybody else? Do we have any other members with questions to officers no um, I have a question Louise if you indulge me um, just to really reiterate I guess what Councillor Hogg um, is the thrust of his questions um, this proposed outline um, application for a car park uh, with a single deck is to be uh, on the same footprint as the existing car park is is that correct can you just confirm that for me Thank you. And through you, Chair. Dan, if you could just go back two slides for me, please. So this is the indicative layout that has been submitted by the applicant to demonstrate that the number of parking spaces proposed can be fitted within the confines of the regional core car park. To be clear, it wouldn't just necessarily be a single deck because I don't think that would achieve the number of parking spaces that are needed because obviously we need 123 spaces on top of the 200. So it would be a multi-decked car park, but it would be of no higher than, Dan, if you could go to the next slide for me, this parameter plan so the conditions that officers are proposing would ensure compliance with the parameters submitted uh, thank you for that that's very clear now um, and uh, just to reiterate that this is um, an outline application so um, patently the design aspect of it would be discussed approved or otherwise at the reserve matter station that is correct and it would be subject to consultation with historic england and all of the other normal statutory and, and non-statutory consultees uh, thank you for that, Louise. Um, any questions, any other questions at all for officers? Nope. Okay. Um, right. If there are um, no more questions for officers, um, I'll move to, to debate. Um, does any member wish to start the debate? I'm conscious I'm the chair, and for some inexplicable reason, it was normally me that started a debate. A debate. I don't intend to do that as chair, so I would like to invite any member present to start the debate, and it's Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. By all means, thank you. Um, so, I, I, I can't see, I mean, th th there's obviously been a, a, a level of controversy um, specifically uh, around the car parking elements of um, the plans going forward and, and, and it seems that um, people have been listened to um, and sp specifically that, that the open space provision, um, specifically uh, Bishop's Park, uh, now seems to be um, protected in some shape or form or, or certainly is not going to be uh, taken up by this um, application certainly. Um, and uh, on that basis, you know, and it seems that the element, uh, the the envelope of the, of the site that we're talking about here is um, essentially um, Brownfield, what they call Brownfield um, 
development. Uh, it, it was, you know, the old arena and the car parks, etc. So we're build, We're not taking away open space provision here. Um, what we are doing is taking um, sort of flat, bland, um, tarmacked uh, land and, and turning it into something really quite useful. Um, something that uh, Peterborough City has been um, you know, been looking for for quite some time, which is um, a, a, a very good uh, university building. Um, uh, and there's been a lot of um, people working very hard um, to, to, to get that to fruition. So um, I, for one, would not want to be seen to be um, getting in the way of the ambitions uh, for a university uh, for Peterborough. Um, and... And I think on the basis that, you know, as I said, that this land is, is essentially brownfield, um, I'm more than happy to, um, to go with uh, officers' recommendations and, and approve. Um, thank you um, for that comprehensive overview and summary. Councillor Hogg, do uh, any other members have anything to contribute? Yes, Councillor Warren. to concur with uh, Council Hogg. I was looking at this site and with it now being on a brownfield, I'm happy to go with the office recommendation. When I was looking at this, I was looking at the detriment to the views of the cathedral and um, with Historic England having no objections to the actual view of the cathedral, I'm not going to stand in the way of this really good development for this city of Peterborough. So I'm mindful to go with the office, officer's recommendation. Um, thank you for that uh, very clear uh, commentary, Councillor Warren. Um, do any other members have anything to contribute? No? Well, I'll put my four penneth in. Um, I actually agree with Councillor Hogg. I think the uh, application is a sound application. Um, it re replicates, in effect, or potentially replicates, uh, after the Reserve Matters application, the loss of the spaces of the arena, let's not forget. Um, and there isn't any incursion into open space. And I think if we were looking at an application that encroached into open space, public open space, I, I think it would be um, a different proposition. Uh, it doesn't, and so I would sit here and support this application. Um, can I have any proposals at all? Councillor Hogg, what is your proposal? Uh, so I'm, I, I'm, I will propose that we um, act, accept the uh, officer's recommendations and approve this, uh, this application. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Very clear proposal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Councillor Jones, um, can I have uh, presumably a, a seconder? I'm happy to second. Chair. Splendid. Okay, we have a proposal and we have a seconder. Um, can we now move to the vote? Um, if members can raise their hands, if you are indeed in favour of Councillor Hogg's proposal. Dan, that appears to be unanimous, but uh, Dan, can you make that official? Yeah, thank oh, you. Sorry, no, 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 I must ask, um, are there anybody, is there anybody against, just for the sake of uh, doing things properly? No, nobody against. Do we have any abstentions? No. Dan, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Yep. So that uh, vote is unanimously agreed to go with the officer's recommendation for approval. Thank, thank you, Dan. Therefore, the proposal is agreed. Um, thank you, members. Um, item... Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, yes, if you'd like to have, thank you very much, gentlemen. Your, your presence is welcome. Your address was informative, and uh, uh, congratulations on the success of your outline application. If you'd like to leave now, you can stay if you wish, um, but it may not be particularly interesting for, for you four. Um, so if you wish to leave now, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Uh, right, members, item 5.2 um, on the agenda, land east of Aqua Drive, Hampton Water in Peterborough. And I'm asking uh, Sylvia Bland to introduce the item. Oh, I'm sorry, I do apologise. Um, it's, it's Carrie. Can, Carrie, can, uh, Carrie Murphy, can you introduce the item? Sorry, Sylvia. I've got 
Sylvia written down here. All right. Thank you, Chair. And you're going to do the slides for me. Okay, thank you. Um, so this application has been submitted for reserve matters approval uh, for access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale under the 2016 outline planning permission for Hampton. The application is for the construction of a three form of entry primary school with 26 place nursery off Aqua Drive. Uh, and there are associated outdoor sports areas uh, some infrastructure, the access point, parking and landscaping included as a part of the scheme. And next slide, please. This slide shows the extent of the application site as outlined in red. The red line extends along Aqua Drive, which is within Hampton Water, um, to indicate the link up to the nearest public highway, which is the A15 London Road. The application site is part of the Hamptons East development area which has outlined planning permission for new housing, schools and local facilities and is allocated for development in the adopted Peterborough local plan. The application site itself measures 2.55 hectares, it's rectangular in shape, it's generally flat and clear of any vegetation. For context, uh, this slide um, is showing the ha what's envisaged for Hamptons East because it's very much an area under construction. It's bounded to the left by the A15 London Road uh, on that left hand on the west side and the East Coast Main Line to the east. There's a number of uh, different neighbourhood areas which are identified on this plan. Um, and this plan is the approved development framework plan for Hamptons East. This document, along with a much more detailed um, development brief, sets out those broad locations of the various land uses, and um, it also um, shows where the, the housing parcels will be and, and schools. Um, the application site um, is, um, is with, as I said, within the Hampton Waters area, and it's one of three school sites and identified. Uh, two have already been built and are open. This next slide shows the approved master plan for Hampton Water and I've identified the school site. Um, as you can see the area around the school is actually envisaged to be the new village centre with other um, mixed use and commercial uses proposed and also there are intended to be um, features of public realm. We move on to the next slide. Uh, because the area is under, under construction, I thought this aerial view would be useful to show the context of what's being constructed, um, currently built out around the site. Points to note are, uh, the site shown in red sits at the intersection of two of primary streets, uh, one being Aqua Drive and the other being Heartland Av Avenue, which um, goes through Hampton Gardens to the north, and that road also connects to London Road. There are some sections of road which are already constructed, but the area which will be um, served this development is in the process of being constructed. To the west of the application site uh, is a residential scheme currently under construction by Barrett David Wilson Homes, and that is part occupied. And to the east is further planned housing develop development by the same house builder. And you can also see the area to the south of the site, which is vacant at the moment, will be where the proposed mixed-use uh, village centre is. There's been no planning applications made on that site yet. To the north of the site is some existing vegetation, which is um, a long stand ground load. Uh, and there are enhancements for the open space and landscaping, um, and these have been approved previously by um, the planning authority. With it being um, a site under construction and some parts of it aren't actually accessible very easily, I've taken some photographs. Uh, these slides show the approach to the application site via um, Aqua Drive. Um, this is the junction with London Road. You then continue along Aqua Drive through the current Barrent development and it ends at uh, where they have their site compound at the moment. The next slide shows the intended extension of Aqua Drive, which would serve the, the school site. And approaching the site from Heartland Avenue, 
these couple of images show the uh, junction at uh, London Road. Um, you then pass by Hampton Gardens Secondary School and you can see in the distance the road actually ends. The road is actually under construction, you just can't get along there at the moment and that, as you can see in the distance, will where it will meet the new section of Aqua, Aqua Drive. You can see this, the application site is on the right-hand side where the porter cabins are. Right. Here's some images of the site itself. As you can see, it's pretty clear of um, any features. Um, looks very much part of a construction site. Um, this is looking um, south uh, back towards Aqua Drive. You can see the Barrett's development in the distance. And there was a, more of a close-up of the Barrett's development. Um, on the right of that image is a, a landscape buffer of around 30 metres wide, uh, which will be grassed and landscaped. So the, the school site is offset from the housing development at that location. Um, and that's just looking um, in the opposite direction, north, back towards Stangrand Lode. Right, um, looking at the proposals itself... Um, through the site layout plan. This indicates the school building uh, would be situated in the sort of southeast part of the site and it will face directly on to the proposed village centre, which is opposite. The building measures um, at, a, at maximum 69 metres in length and 56 metres in width. It's predominantly two storeys in height, with maximum height of around 7.5 metres. To the north of the school building, there will be a large area which is intended for soft and hard play. This includes a multi-use games area and then leads on to playing fields which are intended for year-round use. Staff and visitor parking, as well as the drop-off and pick-up provision, is located in the southern part of the site, um, to the left, really, of the, of the school building. This provision has increased um, as a result of discussions with officers and amended plans have been submitted. I'll go on to explain that a little bit more about that in a little while. The site will use one access point for vehicles off Aqua Drive and three, there are three pedestrian access points from both Aqua Drive and Heartland Avenue and there will be a one-way system through the car park comprising an in and out points. Um, I have some further details about the building, which I'll come on to shortly. There have been two rounds of public consultation on this application. The additional was undertaken because of the revisions to the scheme being submitted. All consultee comments received are summarised in your committee report. There are no remaining objections from the technical consultees, although Peterborough Cycle Forum has raised a number of detailed points, and these are covered in the transport section of the report. Both rounds of consultation have attracted uh, a number of objections from members of the public and Councillor Wigan has called this application in and the reasons for doing this are set out in section 4 of the committee report. You will see from your update report that further correspondence, which are all objections and there's 10 in total, have been received since the committee report was, was published. These are all for members of the public. The committee report makes it clear what can be considered as material planning considerations and also the context of this, of this application for reserve matters approval. The report goes into further detail about the public comments raised and responses are provided on these points. This brings me on to the main issues for consideration of this application. Firstly, I'd like to cover the principle of development. As detailed in the committee report, Officers are satisfied that this detailed application is considered to accord with the outline planning permission and the approved development framework and area brief, where this has been, site has been identified for a number of years as a pro new primary school. As such, the principle of development for a school on this site is, is acceptable. Secondly, uh, regarding highway impacts and parking, I'm going to deal with the traffic impacts first. The highway impacts of Hampton East as a whole were considered when the outline uh, permission, or there have been a number of permissions, but have, these have been granted, the most recent being 2016. The school has previously been taken into account within the strategic traffic modelling work. A transport assessment has been submitted with this application, 
And to reiter reiterate what uh, has been explained in the committee report, the primary reason for the TA being submitted was to help inform an ongoing study into the existing and potential traffic issues in the area, which is currently being undertaken by the local highway authority. Specifically, the TA seeks to establish the transport impact of the proposed school at the Aqua Drive in Eagle Way, uh, at A15 signalised junctions. However, highway officers have identified a number of deficiencies in, in the methodology and modelling, and critically, the lack of validation of the base model that's been used. This being the case, uh, there can be no certainty that the base model accurately represents the situation in terms of queues and delays at the time of the surveys undertaken. And observations by highway officers would suggest that queues and delays actually are significantly lower than the predicted by the modelling. The Highway Authority is also of the view that there is currently no benefit in undertaking new surveys given the national restrictions in place at the moment, as this would mean that the traffic volumes could not be said to be normal. But appropriate account has been made in the consideration of the anticipated catchment area of the school. The proposed trip generation of the school uh, includes a 10% externalisation factor, and this has been previously discussed with officers and included in the TA. It is acknowledged by officers that there's been a particular concern raised through the public consultation with a number of different percentages being quoted from uh, a number of sources about what the actual catchment of the school could be anticipated to be. However, officers are satisfied that this represents a realistic assumption to be used and also within the Peterborough context looking at other schools including faith schools. The distribution of the trips through Heartland Avenue and Aqua Drive is considered to be a reasonable assumption and it is noted that the Heartland um, Avenue junction with its, where it meets with the London Road is subject to congestion during school peak period because it is beside um, Hampton Gardens Secondary School and that is why the Highway Authority is undertaking a study to identify improvements to alleviate this issue. Observations undertaken in association with the study have not identified any such issues at the Aqua Drive uh, London Road Junction during school peak hours. And whilst the predictor school traffic will add to congestion uh, at Heartland Avenue um, Junction, this has been factored into the data being used uh, for the study. So the Highway Authority is of the view that the additional traffic through Aqua Drive will be able to be accommodated without any severe impact on the operation of this junction. In conclusion on traffic impacts, officers therefore raise no objection in principle to the proposals. And whilst the TA conclusions in terms of traffic modelling could not be verified, the transport implications of the development are considered to be acceptable. This is on the basis uh, that also the school was um, included in the traffic modelling with the outline planning permission. And dealing with other traffic matters, um, here is a, a, a greater detail of the proposed car park layout, which I thought would be useful. As indicated, the school will be served um, off Aqua Drive, and there's this in and out arrangement, um, which is acceptable to officers. There will also be a barrier controlled entry and exit point which will allow access for parents for drop at drop off and pick up times. There will be obviously pedestrian and access um, for cycles um, into the school and the school is also intended to be on um, a bus route which will be served along Heartland Avenue. So users will be able to make use of the pedestrian cycle routes across Hampton as well and this will provide good connections uh, to that surrounding catchment area. Regarding uh, parking within the site, the Highways Authority did raise concerns and request a number of areas of improvement for the parking arrangements, and this was to ad address the fact that there was inadequate arrangements for drop-off point in terms of numbers of spaces, and there weren't enough cycle and um, scooter parking uh, for the primary school. So following discussions with officers, the applicant has submitted revised plans and the amendments show an increase in the drop-off bays from 8, and this has risen to 30, and these are indicated by the blue shading uh, of the car parking area um, on the plan. There is also an increase in cycle and scooter provision, 
um, and also for motorcycle parking for uh, staff and other visitors. So the amendments made now adequately address concerns made by the Highway Authority um, and um, there is also future expansion areas um, available should um, additional facilities need to be provided as the demand increases for, for such as cycle parking. Further evidence from the applicant has also um, provided a commitment to a robust travel plan and parking management plan and an interim car parking strategy is being prepared to re we be read alongside this um, and so this details exactly how the school envisages um, the parking the drop-off arrangements to be managed um, so that people can get to the school safely again this is a matter that has been raised um, through the objections of, of, of concern that um, the the concerns are that um, the drop-off facilities would not cater for the volume of traffic expected and also that this would result in cause uh, congestion in the area and parking issues for local residents on the other local roads but in response um, it has been satisfactorily demonstrated that the parking provision is in accordance with the local plan policy LP 13 and unlike other schools this school does have the advantage of a number of dedicated drop-off bays to take traffic off the surrounding roads at the start and the end of the school day so in, in conjunction with the good parking scheme that's being proposed uh, and also the um, measures for a travel plan and car parking management plan the school will be able to provide a, a robust um, culture of sustainable travel from initial occupation and there will be um, a clear mechanism needed in that travel plan to prevent highway parking from the school traffic in, um, in the surrounding area uh, there will be conditions imposed for the travel plan and the parking management plan. So in conclusion on highway matters, um, it is not considered that the proposal would unduly impact on the surrounding highway network. It is accessible by a choice of means of transport and which would ensure safe and convenient access for all users. And the Highways Authority therefore raises no objection to the proposal subject to the imposition of highway conditions which are set out in the, uh, in the committee report. Finally, going on to really design and amenity issues. Um, if I could have the next slide. Right. Um, as I touched on at the beginning of the presentation, the layout of the site proposes a two-storey building with hard standing um, around that building and then the PE play areas at the back of the, of the site. The building layout is surrounded, um, as I say, by um, the car parking um, and in terms of the building itself, there is a main centre with two teaching wings which lead off from this. The main hall, which is indicated um, in, gr in the green um, shading, um, they are at the f that's at the front of the building um, and that allows for a good focal landmark building um, at this entrance uh, to it. So this is the plan of the ground floor and then the next slide is the first floor, um, similar arrangement. Um, overall the design of the new building is considered to be acceptable and appropriate in its scale and massing um, with other parts of, um, of Hampton is consistent which because they're generally two and three storey in height. Um, and so it would fit in with the ca character of the area. The next slide shows some elevations. Um, it's considered uh, that it's also in accordance with the approved development brief and it provides a strong entrance feature at the intersection of the two primary streets of Aqua Drive and Heartland Avenue, um, which our approved design brief highlights as an important area of public realm. I've got some um, 3D images showing the school. As you can see, that is the main entrance point to the building. And then some others which have been provided. That's of the building, the, main, the, the larger image of the building from the rear, from the, um, the sports grounds. Um, and the other ones are showing the building from um, the, again, um, Heartland Avenue in the, in the bottom left-hand corner and um, the third one is looking from um, the Barrett's development across into the site. 
The school building itself is of a modular construction um, and will be um, pre-engineered and manufactured off-site and then brought to site. As you can see, the illustrative designs show the elevation treatments are intended to have some variety and the colour palette that they are proposing to use um, fits with that of the surrounding area and that which is identified in the development brief. It's a mix of brick and timber with blue coloured panelling to reflect the school's branding and also tie in with the surrounding water features. A planning condition will be attached stipulating that further details of these external materials are to be agreed. Officers have assessed any potential amenity impacts for neighbouring uses. Uh, there are acceptable separation distances between the pro proposed school and the nearest neighbouring dwellings, so there would be no impact in terms of overlooking loss of privacy, shadowing or overbearing impact for these neighbours. Conditions will be stipulated, however, requiring appropriate levels of background noise and lighting that may impact on those uh, neighbours. There is an existing requirement as well under the outline planning permission for construction management plan which will also negate potential issues um, which may arise during the construction stage of the development. And having reviewed the potential noise from the school, including its plant, the Council's Environmental Health Officer has advised that a planning condition should be imp imposed to limit the f uh, plant noise. And in terms of noise levels for users of the school, there are suitable internal levels for the teaching areas um, and that uh, re noise report that's been submitted um, is accepted by the Environmental Health Officer and there's no conditions required to mitigate. Just a couple of final points. Um, the planning application is only being considered for that proposed. There are no other t um, buildings on site for wider community use. And the school has indicated that it does not include, intend to um, have the school opened up for that wider community use. I know this is a matter of concern that's been raised through the public consultation. And in any event, it is normal practice to secure via planning condition details to be approved of any intended future community use of the school buildings or their facilities. And therefore, this condition will be imposed. Some comment has been raised through the public consultation that the site identified for the school also includes a community social hall. Whilst there is a requirement in the section 106 agreement that this should be provided in this part of Hampton, this does not form part of the proposals for the school site. The master developer, ONH, is currently reviewing its outstanding community provision requirements across the wider development with a view to consolid, consolid, sorry, consolidating provision elsewhere. The matter of the community hall is therefore being dealt with outside the remit of this application. Other, um, I suppose, more minor planning considerations, such as landscaping ecology, biodiversity, enhancement, drainage and contamination, as you will see from the committee report, have all been considered and are satisfactorily addressed at this stage. There are a number of conditions proposed to deal with any outstanding matters, but they are nothing substantial. In conclusion, the scheme is considered to be acceptable by officers and the recommendation is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Carrie, for that very, very comprehensive address. I hope members appreciated the amount of time and effort that's obviously gone into that, so uh, I do thank you personally. Um, we've got four people registered to speak on this item, so uh, can I invite Kaylee Dixon, Emma Everett, Helen Bates and Alex McGarrell to address the committee. You've got five minutes between you in which to address the committee and the Democratic Services Officer will let you know when you have 30 seconds left and then when the five minutes have lapsed, if indeed you need to be told. Um, when you're ready, can you please switch on your mic and start speaking? Thank you. When you're ready, can you start speaking? Thank you. And introduce yourself, of course.
Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kayleigh Dixon, DPP Planning, and I'm speaking in support of the proposed primary school on behalf of the applicant. Um, we welcome the officer's recommendation for approval of this reserve matters plan application. Um, we're aware of and fully acknowledge that there's been a number of concerns raised to the scheme, largely on highways related grounds. Um, but I'd like to stress to members of planning committee that the principle of locating a primary school on this site has already previously been established um, through the approval of the outline planning consent. The highways impact in terms of trip rates and vehicle movements have therefore already been assessed and deemed acceptable through the approval of the outline consent. There have been many comments submitted from members of the public in respect of data contained within the, the submitted transport assessment, but it's important to note that the applicant provided the transport assessment for information purposes only. Um, to assist the Highways Authority with a separate study as explained in the officers committee report. It um, actually wasn't a validation requirement for the reserve matters application itself. Therefore the report um, wasn't actually submitted for further scrutinization of the vehicle movements as part of this particular planning process. But notwithstanding that the report does conclude that the proposed development is acceptable and in line with the approved master plan. The application before you is for consideration of access, appearance, layout, landscape and in scale only. And the support and application documents demonstrate that the school is well designed, it meets technical specifications for school buildings, it's laid out in such a way to provide appropriate parking, accessibility, sports and play provision and it incorporates um, landscaping such as orchard, uh, wildflower planting to support biodiversity and things like that. We have tried to work proactively with the local plan authority and other consultees such as the highways authority and we have also sought to listen to, to local residents as, as well um, and as, as uh, the officer explained before we during the application process we, we did um, amend the scheme and submit revised plans to sort of update the, the car parking area and increase the drop off parking facilities, um, cycle parking and also increase the opportunities for electric vehicle connections as well. Um, I'd also like to note that the application is supported by Framework Travel Plan which seeks to promote sustainable travel initiatives and this is going to be monitored and regularly reviewed by the school. So overall the principle of locating a school on this site has already been granted and the application being considered today is only in relation to points of design and not points of principle which includes um, traffic flows. There's no outstanding objections from any technical consultees and the application documents demonstrate that the new school is acceptable in terms of its access, appearance, layout, landscaping and scale. Therefore, I'd respectfully request that members of planning uh, committee approve this application for reserve matters. Thank you, Chair. Um, you, you have just over a minute left. Uh, is there anything you wish to add to that? Or uh, no, he's just here to help with any questions. If he's here to help with any questions. Technical Wonderful. Questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that very informative Thank address. Thank you. Uh, members, do we have any questions at all for our speakers? Yes, Councillor Simons. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it's anticipated, I believe, that there could be some pupils from out of area. So it's my understanding if you live more than three miles away and you don't not in the catchment area, uh, possibly you wouldn't receive any funding for transport. So would you consider the school to say have an electric vehicle that could, you know, pick um, pupils up? I think a lot of schools do this these days. It's just a thought for you know environmental issues. 
Um, I'll allow that question, Councillor Simons, but I'm not sure it's actually relevant to the application in front of us, but I, I will allow that question because it may be in the wider interest. Um, hi, Chair. Thank you for the question. Um, it's not actually something that's been considered or proposed. Um, uh, we're expecting uh, a small number of people to be from, from the wider or l further afield from the site, but the majority will be within the uh, catchment of the site. Um, but I guess it's something that the travel plan can, uh, on you know, it's an ongoing document, so it can um, consider that in the future or, or something similar or different um, initiatives if uh, transport and um, sustainable transport is an issue. Thank you for that. Members, do we have any further questions at all? Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Chair, and through you. Um, so just in terms of, um, you, you say a small number, um, what is the anticipated um, number of pupils that you, are look, that you feel will be coming from outside of uh, the Hampton area? So uh, uh, could you just hold on one second? I'm just checking the relevance of that question to the application. It seems to be a follow-on from Councillor Simon's question. Well, it, just, it's, just bear with. It, excuse me. Okay. Just bear with me a second. Yeah. No, we, we don't. Our legal advice is that's not relevant to to the application. Thank so, you. So the, the the application there was a, a change to the layout of the car park uh, to deal with um, drop-off. Um, so I would presume that. Uh, it is more than relevant to, to the application. Do we think? Fair, fair point, Councillor Hogg. Yes, okay, that's fine. Fair point. Fair point. Um, I mean, the, the purpose of the, the drop off is just to ensure that there isn't any, um, you know, um, parking on the unnecessary parking on the road surrounding the site, causing any obstruction or impacting on local residents. So that's that's the purpose for that parking and the drop off. Yeah, but th the question was how many pupils come from outside of the area do you anticipate coming to your school? So we, we, we originally anticipated 10% to be coming from further afield and, and then we did a sensitive test with 20%. So it, it's, um, I believe that it's 650 odd students to the, to the school. So 10% would suggest 65 pupils coming in from outside of the area. And did you say that that could be increased to 20%? And you have 30 places. That, that was uh, purely a sensitivity test. OK, but, so you, but you have 30 places for, for dropping off. Um, it just doesn't seem to add up to me that, that I have to say, in, in terms um, with, of. With, with respect, Councillor Hogg, this is more of a dialogue than a question and answer session. So uh, if you do have particular separate questions. OK, so the, the could, question could you, is. If I could finish, Councillor Hogg. Yeah. Um, could you have uh, specific questions rather than the dialogue? I think that would be useful and also helpful for members of the public that are listening in on, on YouTube. Thanks, Councillor Okay, so um, I believe the provision for, for um, drop-off is 30 places, uh, and yet you've just told me that um, you anticipate, as a minimum, 65 pupils um, coming to your school from outside of the area. Presumably, um, they would need to be dropped off. So uh, the question is, do you feel that 30 spaces for drop-off is sufficient? Um, so th they won't all be arriving at the same time, and the way that the drop-off parking works is that it's a high turnover of, uh, turnover of spaces, so it, it was considered sufficient by the authority. It was increased, but then con considered it sufficient. And I'll, just I'll allow one further question along the same lines, but I think okay, we're, so we're, we're probably exhausting this somewhat. I think the question has been answered quite succinctly, but I'll allow one more question. The, so the, the, the question was around the nursery element of the school, uh, which is, uh, I believe, I can't see the figure right now, but it's certainly uh, a figure of um, how many uh, children for, for that facility would be coming from off-site, oh, off, off uh, the Hampton area, outside. Um, again, that, that kind of was factored into the, the overall assessment and sensitivity test of 10% and 20%, so it wasn't considered separately. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Um, do I have any other members 
at all that wish to ask any questions? No? Okay. Thank you, both of you. Uh, you can now return to your seats in the public gallery. Thank you. Thank you for wiping that down and wiping the other one down to you. Thank you very much. Splendid. Uh, so do, have, uh, do members have any questions for um, our officers? Um, please, can I have any raised hands? Councillor Hogg. Um, sorry, but um, I, I've, I've got a bone on. I'm going to ignore on it here a little bit. So the question is to, to the... Um, Transport officer, um, in light of what, what we've just heard, that um, potentially 65 um, children will be coming uh, from off site. Um, in, in light of that, is 30 places for car parking for drop off uh, adequate um, for, uh, for the school? Thank you, and for you, Chair. Um, we discussed this at length with the with the applicant. I think the Curry um, I went into detail, but the initial proposal was eight spaces. Um, we feel that the the one way system plus the thirty spaces, in addition to a, a parking management plan, um, will effectively be able to manage um, any local issues. Um, in addition to that, we've got the um, localised sort of restrictions that will sort of be put in place on the roads locally to prevent any additional congestion relating to pick up and drop off. Thank you. Did you have a follow up question, Councillor Hogg? You've put your mask back on, so I take it that you haven't. Sorry, no, 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 no that's, that's fine. Your, your visual effect was fine. Councillor Hussein, did you have a question? Um, the officers mentioned, um, if I'm correct, about some commercial. Um, properties near these schools and also the fact that there's two schools on the same road um, it was mentioned that the base model um, is not verified for the traffic from the traffic report so would there not be a concern that maybe the the, the road junctions should be looked at beforehand um, you know the, the the junction going on to London Road um, for, for traffic issues before um, the schools built rather than then having traffic issues once the schools built and then trying to deal with the road issues, especially if there's also commercial units near the schools. I guess that question is levelled at you, Mr. Grease. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to defer to our transport okay. modelling expert, Jess Fine. Tuttle. Jess. Good afternoon, everyone. And, um, through the chair. The overall Hampton development, um, as given planning permission last in 2016, contains provision for a number of houses, uh, three schools and three local centres, I believe. Um, so all the traffic associated with anything such as a retail or a small uh, local centre and a school was all packaged up in the original traffic modelling which was submitted as part of the original planning application. So in terms of access arrangements, we've got potentially in the future four access points to Hampton East. Uh, that was all taken into consideration in the original outline planning permission and the modelling associated with that. Councillor Hussein, do you have a follow up question? Thank you for your question and thank you, Mr. Tuttle. Um, are there any other questions for officers? Yes, Councillor Hogg. So a non-transport related question, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, so in your address, you, you, you touched on um, the fact that the school will not be uh, providing any community provision, is that correct? Um, and yet that is normally something that one would expect from a, a primary school. And, and I believe you said something along the lines of that is something that, that could be put into um, uh, rec not recommendations as a as a as a, uh, a condition of uh, approval um, that the school would need to have a plan for providing 
community um, access for whatever purpose. Okay, to speak. Thank you. Yes, so um, in my experience, it's more the secondary schools where you would potentially see community uses um, because um, they have more facilities than primary schools and they t can open them up um, to the public during the evening times you know, for sports use. Um, the, yeah, the, the applicant has indicated that at the moment they're not proposing any um, community uses. We put that planning condition on there in case in, in the you know, fullness of time that might change. But it's just, it's just you know, it's to secure that if any school being built in Peterborough, um, you know, we would put that planning condition on there uh, just to ensure um, that, that that matter was covered and that they do come and get those necessary approvals from the local planning authority. Thank you for that, Carrie. Uh, so just, Paul, just, sorry, follow on. Yep. So just, just to be clear, the... Um, the, the applicant has said that they, they, they do not want to have provision, but we will be putting a condition on there nonetheless. Yes, um, it's not their intention, is what I understand, but yes, we would put that condition on there anyway. Thank you, Carrie. Satisfactory answer. Um, anybody else in the committee have any questions for our officers? Yes, indeed. Uh, a question, certainly. Councillor Sharp. I'll indulge you if you put your microphone on. Sam, up. If you just may indulge me, a follow up question in relation to Councillor Hogg's point for really for, for highways. You talked about um, for increasing the number of drop off spaces to 30, and obviously there's some form of transitionary modelling required off the, off the back of that. Was, was that submitted? And if so, or was that even considered in discussion? And if so, have we any idea of what the limit might be in terms of number of drop-offs drop -offs that that design could cope with? Excuse me, I'll have to uh, defer to Jez again on the, on the modelling side. Good afternoon again and through the chair. Um, school drop-off and pickups are, are interesting things. Um, when schools are being dropped off, the turnover of spaces, especially with the one-way system, you'll find that the cars will drive in, park, the child will be taken to the school gate or the school entrance, as, as is the case with these days, uh, you know, child safety and everything. Um, and then the parents will generally get back in the car and go. So I think that if you were to look at over the the school drop off and pick up time which is generally around about sort of 15 minutes to half an hour depending on the school um, then you would be able to at least get at least three sets of 30 um, cars in those spaces sort of rolling in and rolling out so yeah I at 30 spaces you, you could accommodate 63 65 cars very easily during that um, pick up and drop off period Thank you for that, Mr. Tuttle. Yep, time. Um, I have a question, actually, um, Mrs. Murphy. You're, in your uh, very comprehensive address, you mentioned a, an off-site modular build for, for this school. Now, um, that, uh, for people in the know, is um, a, a known subject, a, a known a proposition. But for people that aren't aware of what uh, modular build is, could you just give us a brief overview of how that impacts on the site and from a construction and a noise point of view thank you yeah. um i must admit i mean probably um kelly the planning agent would know a little bit more about it than myself but i understand yeah that a lot of the work is of construction is done off-site and and things are moved sort of so far constructed onto the site it also allows for the build program to be shorter than normal um, because yes it's done so they should be a, a quicker um, construction and, and probably less impact in terms of kind of construction noise and and um, potential um, nuisance 
and, 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 and the like. But um, yes, I suppose it would be interesting to see <laughs> a bit more about it. Okay, thanks for that. Would I be right in saying, do you think, would I be right in saying that uh, it would be almost uh, like a prefabricated uh, type of engineering exercise and the site disturbance, noise, fuss um, yeah. would, is, likely to be, is likely to be less than a normal, what one would consider a normal construction yeah. process? From what I understand, that, that would be the case, yes. Thank you. Uh, Mrs Murphy, I'm wishing to lead you on that, but I just wanted that clarified. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? No, no further questions for officers. Thank you. Um, can we now move to debate? Um, does any member wish to start the debate? Please. You're removing your mask, Councillor Hogg, so I suggest uh, you're possibly wanting to start the debate. Uh, um, over to you, I, I, I'm, I, I'm happy to do so, but I don't feel that necessarily has to be me that starts the debate. Um, so unsurprisingly, um, I'm, um, I have reservations over the, 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 the car parking situation. Um, I, I, I take um, officers' advice that um, the, the 30 spaces could, could, could equal 90 cars, but um, it, it was some time ago that um, my, my, I dropped my daughter off at, at, at primary school. Um, but I, I tend to, to, to remember that it took considerably more than five minutes to to walk her into school to take a, a coat off and put a hang a book bag up and um, have a, a, a chat on what have you so um, I think that uh, in a 10 15 minute um, period just to, to say that you're going to get three cars in and out of um, parking spaces um, over that period of time it is generous to say the least um, and I would suggest that um, certainly when it comes to the pickup, um, parents generally um, turn up before the gates are open um, because um, I, I know that they don't